Issues in World Trade The world economic scenario has undergone rapid changes particularly during the last one decade. The formation of single European market, unification of Germany, economic reforms sweeping across the East European countries as well as some developing countries of the world, disintegration of the Soviet Union, Gulf crisis, rising economic power of Japan and newly industrialized economies in the world markets, formation of North American Free Trade Arrangement, NAFTA, and Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, APEC, gradual opening up of China, and last but not the least, the successful conclusion of Uruguay round of multilateral trade negotiations offer enormously challenging problems as well as opportunities to international business and industry. There are several forces which are moving the world towards a single economy. In the backdrop of these, in this lesson, we discuss issues in the world trade. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to explain various issues related to world trade, describe trends in world trade, describe relation between India and foreign trade. The most significant issues in world trade include regionalism versus multilateralism, liberalization and globalization in foreign trade, electronic commerce and electronic data interchange, environmental challenges, etc. The growing popularity of regional trading arrangements RTAs, has ignited concerns that these agreements may undermine the global trading system by discriminating against import and investments from non-members. Critics of regional arrangements argue that this practice would violate a core principle of the World Trade Organization that all imports from member states should face the same barriers to trade. Furthermore, eliminating tariffs on imported goods from some countries but not others can be counterproductive. Supporters of RTAs maintain that these agreements have enabled countries to liberalize trade and investment barriers to a far greater degree than multilateral trade negotiations allow. Globalization and liberalization broadly mean integration of different countries with the world. Policymakers in the 21st century will find themselves pursuing development goals in a landscape that has been transformed economically, politically and socially. Two main forces will be shaping the world in which development policy will be defined and implemented. These are globalization and liberalization. At the end of the 20th century, globalization has already demonstrated that economic decisions, wherever they are made in the world, must take international factors into account. While the movement of goods, services, ideas and capital across national borders is not new, its acceleration in the last decade marks a qualitative break with the past. The world is no longer a collection of relatively autonomous neighborhoods that are only marginally connected by trade. The international economic order is evolving into a highly integrated and electronically networked system. Electronic commerce is recreating the world's economy as liberalization and increased competition transform information-based industries. The open global economy places a premium on characteristics inherent to electronic commerce. The ability to respond to markets without concern for geography and time through a medium that is ubiquitous and instantaneous. The issue of trade and environment was not included for negotiation in the Uruguay round, but certain environmental concerns were nevertheless addressed in the results of the negotiations. The preamble to the WTO agreement includes direct references to the objective of sustainable development and to the need to protect and preserve the environment. World gross domestic product GDP and trade growth slowed down in 1998 as the Asian crisis deepened and its repercussions were felt increasingly outside Asia. 
while the share of primary commodities in world merchandise trade was only slightly above one-fifth in 1997, it was more than two-thirds for the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. In a sample of 91 developing countries, 67 of them recorded a share of primary products in total merchandise exports above 50%, reaching as high as 95% in some cases. While oil exporting regions recorded the strongest annual value declines in merchandise exports, countries directly affected by the Asian financial crisis reported the strongest import decline. The concretionary forces of the Asian crisis and falling commodity prices were, however, less damaging because of the robustness of continued economic growth in the United States and strengthened demand in Western Europe. The booming U.S. economy stimulated intra-NAFTA trade and sustained exports and output in other regions. The interaction between trade and output in the transition economies in recent years has been unique among the major regions. Sluggish overall economic activity, including a decline in regional output in recent years, has been accompanied by export and import growth rates above the global average. Merchandise imports have expanded significantly faster than world trade in both real and nominal dollar values. Manufactured items are the leading commodity of the world trade. The share of manufactured item in world merchandise exports has been growing steadily. One of the striking features of world trade in 1998 was the exceptionally large variation in the growth rates among countries measured in value terms. Consequently, the ranking of the leading traders changed dramatically for both merchandise and commercial services trade. There are a few international organizations such as World Trade Organization, International Monetary Fund, World Bank, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Asian Development Bank, Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, Food and Agriculture Organization, Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, International Chamber of Commerce, the Commonwealth, etc which are directly or indirectly concerned in the promotion of world trade. Apart from international organizations, there are a large number of regional economic groups which are making efforts in the promotion of regional as well as world trade. WTO has helped to create a strong and prosperous trading system contributing to unprecedented growth. Its main function is to ensure that trade flows smoothly freely, fairly, and predictably. Despite the fact that India is far better placed than a number of countries in the world in terms of a large domestic market, a broad-based industrial infrastructure, a large pool of training manpower, impressive entrepreneurial and managerial skills, abundant supply of cheap labor and adequate natural resources, etc., it could not play the role of a global marketeer because of its inward-looking economic management policies pursued for decades. At a time when the world trade expanded fast, India missed its export opportunities because of its excessive emphasis on import substitution, sheltered markets, and a controlled economy. The situation did not change until 1991 when the government took a bold decision to integrate the Indian economy with the world economy by following a policy of liberalization. Faced with a precarious foreign exchange situation, adverse balance of payments and a huge external debt, the government of India adopted a comprehensive program of macroeconomic stabilization and structural adjustments beginning from June 1991. A sustained rapid growth in exports remains the most crucial ingredient for ensuring long-term external viability. Vigorous efforts will, therefore, 
they require to reverse the current deacceleration and achieve a rapid growth of exports, especially in the context of the difficult international trading environment brought about by the economic and financial crisis in East Asia. It is expected that in East Asian countries, there is a likelihood of some reorientation of economic activity away from capital-intensive industries towards labor-intensive ones which will further intensify competition in markets of importance to us. To achieve our export targets in light of the difficult external environment, we should also endeavor to reduce various transaction costs faced by our exporters. Our exporters indicate that transaction costs emanating from implementation of various rules and regulations pertaining to obtaining licenses, custom clearances, refund of duties, infrastructural constraints, etc. impinge adversely on export performance. Although progress has already been made to simplify rules and regulations, further efforts need to be there to smoothen export transactions. Petroleum and its products account for a relatively large share of the total import bill. International prices of these products have softened significantly, reflecting general world recessionary conditions. But there is considerable uncertainty surrounding the future's involvement of international prices of petroleum. If the trend were to be reversed, there are significant downside risks to the balance of payment. Therefore, efficiency of use must be encouraged and remaining distortionary policies in the energy sector need to be phased out. Tourism in the past has been a major source of buy-ins for invisible earnings. However, more recently, growth of tourist arrivals and earnings has not been so healthy. This has occurred despite efforts at the center and state levels to accelerate the growth of tourism in India. These efforts need to be intensified. Airport system and procedures need to be greatly improved. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. RTA stands for Regional Trade Association. Right or wrong? Please click. Wrong. World Trade Organizations came into existence in 1998. Right or wrong? Please click. Wrong. Manufactured items are the leading commodity of the world trade. Right or wrong? Please click. Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. The world economic scenario has undergone rapid changes, particularly during the last one decade. Economic reforms sweeping across the East European countries, as well as some developing countries of the world, are compelling the countries of the world over to adopt to the policies of globalization. Though India took bold initiatives to introduce economic reform since June 1991, it has not been able to achieve the desired results in the area of external trade and foreign direct investments. India's share in world trade, which was around 2% in the 50s, has come down to 0.6% currently. We have not been able to maintain the desired growth in our exports and imports during the past couple of years.